Prof. Ladu is not here because he also is very good at detecting errors. Any observations on the cover page? No? Page one then. Salam, you have any? Uh, okay. It also takes us to page three. Still on the corrections. But you'll not detect anything so far. Okay, page four. Page six. Page seven. Page eight. No. Bakau. I thought I saw your hand. I take it then that we are all satisfied with the records as they are. Then we can proceed It has been moved and seconded that the record of votes and proceedings of the National Assembly sitting of Thursday the 18th of November 2021 be approved without amendment. Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those not in favor, please say no. The ayes have it. Thank you very much. Clerk, can we then proceed? Statements by Honorable Ministers. Oral Ministerial Statement on the Implementation and Monitoring of the Annual Budget by the Honorable Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs. Thank you very much. accounted for 22% and 18% of total expenditure, respectively. Other, current, other recurrent expenditure decreased from $5.7 billion in 2020 to $4.96 billion in 2021. This represents a decrease of 14% in other recurrent expenditure with only 85% of its approved budget spend over the period. Honorable Speaker, personal emolument PEs increased by 12% over the period, rising from $4.07 billion in 2020 to $4.56 billion in 2021. Debt service also increased by 8% year on year to $4.53 billion from $4.2 billion dollars in December 2020. However, capital expenditure registered the $0.69 billion on voter registration and election activities 
which was made possible through the supplementary appropriation, SAP. Similarly, the Ministry of Transport, Works and Infrastructure absorbed 40 percent more than its approved budget, whilst the Ministry of Information and Communication Infrastructure absorbed 39 percent more than the initial approved budget. The overabsorption for, minist for Ministry of Information and Communication can, Moisi, can be attributed to expenditure on subventions, GRT elections related activities, contributions to international organizations, and ICT infrastructure. Honorable Speaker, the top spending budget line items are subventions, $2.91 billion, roads and bridges, $2.19 billion, operating costs, $520 million, settlement of confirmed debts, $516 million, travel expenses, $319 million, food and food services, $301 million, vehicles, $291 million, school improvement grants, $289 million, general pension benefits, $244 million, and purchase of fuel and lubricants, $228 million. Expenditure on roads and bridges amounted to $2.19 billion, which represents a 133% absorptive rate in comparison to the initial approved budget of $1.6 billion. Meanwhile, absorption for food and food services was 111% for the period and was mainly due to the expansion of the school feeding program under the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education and Feeding of Security Forces. Honorable Speaker, the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs does monitor the annual budget. The Ministry monitors budget execution performance of all MDAs on a monthly basis and publishes fiscal data on the website of the Ministry for transparency purpose. Fiscal monitoring missions and site visits are also conducted to assess progress relating to implementation of budget activities funded by both government and development partners. Honorable Speaker, as we are still recovering from the impact of COVID-19 pandemic and to consolidate our reforms within the public finance landscape, the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs intends to work with all sectors to implement prudent fiscal policies in line with our national development objectives. Furthermore, we will also continue to collaborate with all our, our partners in government to ensure more resources are made available to critical sectors, including health, education, and security sectors. Honorable Speaker, managing public resources is a sacred trust, and we take it very seriously as the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs. We are also aware that this August Assembly believes the same and remains committed to playing a critical role in this process. It is therefore our fervent hope that our partners, the, the, the government of the Republic of the Gambia, through the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs and the National Assembly, will continue to collaborate and deliver to the Gambian people the sustainable development outcomes they richly deserve. Thank you very much, Honorable. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Minister, for the statement and meeting the requirements of the standing orders of the National Assembly. And on that note, may I invite any honorable member who wishes to take part to, to ask a question on the statement to do so. Notwithstanding, I will re reiterate that the question time cumulatively shall not be more than one hour and Honorable Speaker, I would like to thank the Minister for um, that brief statement given to us. Honorable Speaker, I want the Minister to further explain why the Ministry of Roads and Infrastructure um, exceed beyond the approved budget, if I, if I can understand clearly uh, on page three.
how these uh, funds were disbursed. Those are my concerns. Honorable Minister will respond. Um, Sarah Kunda, thank you. And then Kian Central, thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. The standing orders is talking about the detailed scrutiny of the monitoring and implementation of the budget. Well, I was just looking at the mathematics, Honorable Minister. Uh, you talked about 24% on recurrent expense. It was 85% of the approved budget. Well, I added 24, 22, 18, and 22, and have 86%. I don't know whether my mathematics is wrong or what is there. But what has happened to the other 15%? It's good to, to explain. Uh, it is also important that uh, we get the, the real breakdown because if we say the uh, roads took uh, the sum that is mentioned, which is approximately uh, 2.19 billion. Well, it's the implementation that matters, the detail of the implementation. Which roads, how far have we come to 20%, 100%, uh, and what do you anticipate? Because that's the objective. The objective is we are implementing piecemeal. So if we are allocating annually piecemeal, at least we should anticipate that we should get this halfway, three-quarter way, or total uh, uh, implementation, finishing of the project. I think that is important. anticipation of how to prepare for 2022. So it is important to look at the subventions and see which were the subvented institutions and what is the impact in terms of allocating such huge resources which the minister says constitute the uh, top spending uh, items in the budget. So we need to look at that item to scrutinize it to see whether there is value for money. To conclude, Honorable Speaker, it is important uh, to also ask the question. Uh, he did mention uh, the issue of uh, the Independent Electoral Commission and the uh, GRTS uh, consuming quite a lot. But I know that the security also covered the elections uh, quite a lot. So uh, how much have uh, have they spent on that in terms of security of the elections? Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. May I call on the Honourable Member for Kiang Central, but just for all of us to be mindful so that for equitable distribution of the time, so that everybody, or almost everybody who wants to ask a question can have the opportunity. So let's try to limit our questions to one or two rather than you know, making, uh, asking about three or four questions. Others may want to also ask questions. So let's just bear that in mind. Thank you. Um, yes, Kian Central, you will have the floor. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Speaker, my concerns are in page four of the report, where uh, expenditure on vehicles, $291 million, to me is a huge amount. I want the Honorable Minister to explain to this August Assembly where, whether there have been uh, purchase of uh, new vehicles, why the amount is very high. And then the traveling expenses that I consider as not a priority also seems to be high 
Also, the purchase of fuel and then the lubricant, $228 million. To me, the, these are high expenditures, so we want the minister to give us a detailed explanation as to why they are huge. We respond to those questions raised by the three honorable members before we take the next lot. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Um, the first question as to the amount spent is higher than what was budgeted for. That is why exactly I came for the supplementary appropriation. When it comes to roads and bridges, we only pay when a certificate is issued. Sometimes the program, as it is programmed, you might program that the implementation for this year may be this is the amount allocated. But the, if the rate of the works is faster than what we expected, then they will have to come and submit the, the certificates. That is why when we came to the um, for a supplementary application, the additional amount were requested so that we can pay them. There was nothing that we paid that, is what, that was not budgeted for. In addition to the budget, and including the um, supplementary appropriation. That's where we said initial approved budget and the actual expenditure. That's the difference. That's why we had the, sub, uh, the, the, um, the um, additional expenditures. What we do on a monthly basis on our website, we provide the detailed expenditures on our website and its breakdown. The request that you have um, requested today for the recurrent example, the 85% the absorbed and the 15%, we will never release any additional amount unless and until the sector provides the activity report on the, expend, on the release of the fund. Let's say last month you provided your activity report, your certificate, then we release that money. When, you do, when, when the activity report is not presented to us, we cannot release that, those additional funds. That's, this is why sometimes you can see 95% um, uh, budget execution, 80%. That 20% is will help because you cannot tell us. You, you, you did not, some, sometimes work is in progress and you cannot give us the actual detailed expenditure. And unless and until that work is completed for you to provide the expenses, we cannot give you additional funds. Even if it comes to the end of the year, we insist on making sure that the funds we give you before, you spend it. If you don't spend it, unfortunately, it has to go to the, the following budget year. So that's the discrepancy, 85, 90. Sometimes you even see some of the institutions will just um, provide 40% budget execution. But that's a penalize, that you will be penalized because the following year, if you come and give us the same activities, it will be rejected through the bilateral because you have to justify why that particular activity was not um, done the year before. IEC, okay, the subventions, we, we can, tomorrow we can give you the detailed breakdown of all the subventions before midday. We'll provide the write-up and so that we can, we can give it to you. Um, IEC GRTS expenses, yes, we will give it to you. I know that the IEC, we've released 100% of what was budgeted for, including the, the, the SAP. Likewise, GRTS. GRTS, including the media houses. If I remember, they were giving almost 15 million or so. Everything was um, uh, released to them, and the audit has been conducted to make sure that it was not only released, but the, the, the activity was also done. For the security, you have the police, you have the army, you have the SIS. What we do when we release, we release it in one lump sum, and that the, 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 um, the particular, like the army, the, when the auditing is done, they will go and audit individually, the army, the SIS, and the police. The Ministry of Defense, the allocation for the army will go through the Ministry of Defense. The police will have to go through the uh, Ministry of Interior. SIS will have to go through the State House. So when we release it, when the